like you said, you've always been outspoken about uh, the state of affairs in the country and uh, been a critic of bad governance and yeah. incompetence. What led you to throw your heart into the murky waters of politics, as a uh, few people might uh, you know, call it? When I was, um, when I had kind of prayed about it internally and, and mm. had started coming to the place where I decided that I was going to try and, you know, make a run for it, um, the first person, obviously, that I would speak to would be my wife. And I remember in those first conversations when I said, hey, I'm thinking about kind of mm. doing this thing, her concern was how dirty and dangerous politics is. And I said, you know, politics in Nigeria is very dirty and very dangerous, but until good people decide to get to become a part of that system and decide to infiltrate the system and try to change it or at least try to contribute to the change, then it'll always be dirty and dangerous. It'll always mm. be exactly how it is. What triggered it for you? I mean, because you, you're an influencer. You yeah. do positive music and you could get your message across yeah. uh, through your music and activism. Yeah. Why, what was that thing that said, look, I can't see. So here's, I can't here's what it anymore. was. You know, I originally, yeah. like you said, I originally always kind of saw myself more as an influencer, almost like more Martin Luther King, mm. using the platform, using the voice to kind of make noise about the issue. But then I realized that there's nobody coming. There's mm. there's there's nobody coming, and and in the sense that not in the way that we need them to come. So we have alternatives for president and stuff, but. I don't know how many of that is how many of those are realistic, you know, unless we kind of unified and had one person to give a third option that was clear cut. I don't know how many of those alternatives are realistic. You want to be president of the country, you need 25% of the votes in two thirds of the states. Yeah. The change doesn't need we don't need change just from the presidential position. We need change at all levels of government. Mm. And I was looking around in, in my campaigning to say, young people, let's get our PBCs. And then I said, you know. There's a lack of people understanding that we need to get in and start small. We need to, you fix a country like Nigeria by fixing one community at a time, by fixing the House of Rep seats and the State mm -hmm. House of Assembly and, the, you know, the legislator and, and, the, and the lawmakers. You know, you dream big, but you start small. Everybody wants to be Obama, but people don't realize that Obama started in the community. He was a community mm -hmm. worker before he got into the State House, before he became a senator, before he now said, I want to be president. So, so for me, it was like, well, if there's nobody else coming to do this the right way, as in dreaming big but starting small and understanding that we can start to change community by community, law by law, you know, person by person, one mind at a time, mm. one school at a time, one community at a time. If nobody else is, understands that that's what I feel is necessary, then, you know, you want something done. Sometimes you have to get up and do it yourself. Mm. And so that's... What In I'm your TED Talk, you did mention that Nigerians need to get up and fix this country because it's mm -hmm. quite uh, dysfunctional if you look at uh, the state of affairs and uh, all indices that indicate the level of human development were mm -hmm. basically in the bottom rung and um, that leads me to this question you are running for seats in the federal house of representatives mm -hmm. for Etiosa federal constituency mm -hmm. what needs to be fixed in Etiosa and uh, why do you want to go to the house of reps why do you think it's the uh, channel for you to fix things here? So for me, I would say this. I'd say, first of all, Etiosa, um, like we were discussing off camera, mm. is essentially a microcosm of Nigeria as a whole. So you have people from every tribe. You have Hausa mm -hmm. people, Yoruba people, Igbo people, people from all walks of life here. You have the richest people in Banana Island. You have the poorest people you know, in parts of Obalende and Aja and things mm. like that. You have the best of schools, if you talk about like Very the true. private schools yeah. that the average Nigerian can't afford, and then you have the worst of schools, the schools that don't have one working computer, mm -hmm. the schools that have students who are being set up as we speak for failure. You have the best of healthcare if you want to talk about the really expensive mm -hmm. hospitals in VI, but you have the worst of healthcare. You have people who can't afford to pay the very basic of medical bills. You, the problems that we face in Etiosa are problems that Nigeria faces as a whole, and some of them have been there for ages. I mean, case in point, look how much we, we generate as a community in the two toll gates, in the Leki Axis and in the Leki Ikoi Bridge. Yeah. Every day we generate an obscene amount of money in these toll gates, but we still have potholes. 
Like that makes zero sense to me.